Dr. Khaled, would like to give you the floor to just have an open conversation with the audience for 15 minutes, and then we'll start the Q&A. Uh, thank you all for, for being here. Um, I'm really glad to see this documentary. Shall I use the mic? What I'd like to say is, from my uh, personal experience uh, with this with this journey, um, I got to give you guys a little bit of background about this as well. I'm not actually a runner. Uh, I started running uh, October 2017. Um, previously, I'd never run more than three kilometers. And uh, I decided one day that I wanted to learn a lot about myself. Uh, and more importantly, that I wanted to give back to my community. Uh, so I had this idea uh, that if I was going to do something I was not good at, I'd learn a lot about myself. Uh, so I decided to run. Uh, when I first decided to take on a challenge like this, um, I really did think it was impossible. Uh, you know, I, had, uh, I had some pride, but I also knew that it would take me out of my comfort zone and it would allow me to experience many feelings and emotions I had never felt before. And in those three months from October until I started this run, uh, I ran around 2,800 kilometers. Uh, and let me tell you, it wasn't fun. Uh, it was, uh, I'm flat-footed, by the way. Uh, and uh, coming from someone who was obese three years earlier, uh, running was really, really difficult. It wasn't something I uh, was accustomed to. Um, I ended up uh, pushing my mileage up and running double marathons a day, 90 kilometers a day. And it's those times, uh, uh, the times when you're preparing for a big challenge or a goal in life, uh, those are the times where it's not, it, there's nothing special about it. There's no glamour and fun about it. You're doing it behind closed doors. But I truly believe that preparation in life is the most important thing we can do. We have to always be prepared. And uh, one thing I can look back at uh, that made me uh, have a successful journey like this is my preparation. Uh, you know, life sometimes throws you curveballs, and uh, you're going to strike out many times, uh, but you're always going to have another chance to uh, to get back at that curveball. And uh, that's what I built my my mind my mindset on: is there's going to be a lot of struggles, just like life uh, running this ultra marathon. But at the same at the same time, embrace the journey. Uh, we can't shy away from you know, barriers that we face in life, just like I couldn't shy away from moving forward and getting to uh, Port Zayed. And more importantly, um, you know, cancer is such a treacherous disease. Uh, you know, many of us uh, know individuals uh, that have either, you know, passed away from cancer or are dealing with cancer. And um, from my own personal experience, uh, running for a cause uh, uh, to help raise cancer awareness in, in this country was a very, very special moment for myself. Uh, I feel like we're all obliged to give back to, uh, to our communities. And I feel like we can do it in so many other forms other than giving uh, a donation. You can do an extreme event like mine and run from the east to the west coast of the UAE if you'd like to. But it is our goal to give back to our communities. It, it is our goal to uh, you know, spread awareness. Uh, and um, uh, doing it and doing it successfully uh, was probably one of the best uh, feelings I ever uh, had in my life. Um, I'm also embarking on another journey uh, coming up on February 1st, uh, 2019. Uh, I will be running from uh, Abu Dhabi to Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Uh, the distance is going to be 2,070 kilometers. Uh, I'm doing it in remembrance of the martyrs that lost their lives and the Arab coalition in order to make uh, the United Arab Emirates one of the sa safest countries in the world. Uh, so um, I've started my preparation for that uh, with a lot of experience in hand. Um, I have become a runner. I think I can say that now. You know, I've learned a lot about running. Um, but it's, um, it's really interesting that uh, when, you push, when you push your body to places that you, you probably thought would, you would never get to, you learn so much about yourself. And one thing that I really would like to share with you guys is uh, we all sometimes need to get out of our comfort zones and we all need to experience uh, something that we may think is impossible uh, uh, because uh, everything is achievable once you're prepared for it. Uh, thank you very much and we'd like to give the, 
some question and answers, I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. So we'll open the floor for the audience. We have a question from other parts of the room. It's up there, up there. Sorry. Can you please introduce yourself and just where are you from before giving okay. the question? Um, hi, Dr. Khalid. Um, thank you for coming here. My name is Andres. I'm from Colombia. I'm an NYUD student currently. Um, I also believe firmly that stepping outside your comfort zone is the only way to achieve maximum personal growth. Um, and I think ultra-endurance races like the one you've participated in teaches you a lot about yourself. I'm interested in hearing a little bit more about the lessons that you've learned during the, the preparation for these events, um, but more importantly, how you've applied them outside of your running in your personal life. Great answer. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you, you know, um, let, let's, let's, let's speak about the last thing you said. Uh, anything that's happened to me outside of, uh, in my personal life, after my life, seems very easy and fixable nowadays. <laughs> you know, uh, the things that I thought was, were impossible and I couldn't decide on anything. Uh, I'm a quick decision person right now, uh, mainly because uh, the training uh, that I go through on a daily basis um, takes you out of your comfort zone. So when you go back to reality, I call it, and you know you have you know responsibilities, you have to make some decisions, they come easy because like running an ultra marathon, you have to make decisions at any step in the way. You have to tweak and, and move around because you're moving forward. And uh, I'll be honest, you know, before I started embarking on this on this journey, I couldn't make a decision for a while. You know, I'd, I'd be, you know, back and forth and some things would upset me and some things would, you know, make, ruin my day. I'll, I can guarantee you nothing ruins my day nowadays. You know, I'm just uh, focused on training. Um, uh, training is difficult. It's not easy. I train around six and a half to seven hours a day. Um, the only thing that, you know, confuses me is my, my food intake, you know, how I'm meant to eat. I'm a vegan one day, a vegetarian the second day, and a pescatarian the third day. So now you know what kind of mindset I have, right? <laughs> uh, but in general, uh, uh, you know, uh, doing extreme endurance uh, uh, races like these really, really helps you grow as a person and really helps you make uh, positive, fast-acting decisions on a daily basis uh, outside, of, uh, outside of the sport. So it, it definitely has helped me. Thank you. Question on this side. Assalamu alaikum. Abdul Al-Kaabi from Jamia Rahma. I'm sorry, Abdul Al-Kaabi from Rahma Society, which is a cancer patient care society. Uh, I know who you are. Right? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Doctor, uh, for your time. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, New York University for this opportunity, uh, which is, was given to uh, Dr. Khaled to talk about his experience uh, through the run. And also, I would like to thank you, Dr. Khaled, for dedicating this run for uh, Rahma Society. My question uh, is, uh, if we, if we want to go back to uh, Rahmaran, when was the moment or the timing, Dr. Khaled, that you want to go back to and live it longer? I think whoever was with me this run is going to laugh when I say this, but I, I miss Seyh uh, Sidera. Uh, I know no one misses that area, uh, you know, especially the, the film crew, uh, my coaches, my father. You were there as well, so let's not forget. It was... Uh, really difficult road. Uh, I, I wanted to push myself to my limits, uh, and I tried my best to do it, but because I was so mentally prepared, and I'm not saying physically, uh, so mentally prepared that there were going to be obstacles in my way, and that I was going to face many obstacles, um, it tried, that road tried to break me several times, and I wouldn't let it uh, whatsoever. Uh, um, it, it got close many times, but I think we all shared a great moment uh, and say, you know, at one point I was uh, running with, I believe, eight different individuals at three in the morning. It was fog, it was cold. Um, I heard Tupac in the background at one point, some music. Uh, we were talking about life, some personal things. So it got really interesting. And uh, I was able to share uh, those hard moments with a lot of people that, uh, you know, I, I see in the stands. See you over there, you know, we had a, we had a laugh. 
Uh, but uh, it was a special moment. So if you, if I was going to go back, I'd go back to the hardest moment, which was in Sihah Zdira. Assalamu uh, alaikum, Abdul Shakur Abdullah from Public Health Research Center, NYU Abu Dhabi. Um, I kind of have mix, mixed feelings, but I first congratulate you. Uh, I remember when we first met with Abdullah and his uh, friends uh, talking about this, you know, film and 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 and, and your presentation. Um, it was kind of like a dream, and you know, is this true? But attending it is really, really overwhelming with joy, and thank you very much again. Uh, one of the things we are doing at NYU is to run a, a study called the UAE Health Future, and you've mentioned um, issues like obesity and things like that. The aim of, of which is to uh, curb the obesity, uh, diabetes and other cardiovascular diseases in the in the UAE country in the UAE and other countries in the region. Uh, and I was wondering, because I really consider you as a role model, what would be your message to the UAE youth who are suffering from obesity, at least up to sixty percent of of them? Well, uh, my first message would be a very uh, straightforward message. Uh, you know, the United Arab Emirates uh, didn't become this established nation by luck. Uh, they did it through a lot of suffering. Uh, we are where we are today as a nation because we suffered to get here. Uh, but there's also another very important point. Um, you have 38% of kids between the ages of 11 and 19 that are obese in this country. Now, if you fast forward 10, 15 years from now, my prediction is that 50% of the workforce is going to be obese. Now, how are we going to continue growing as a country when our human resources are going to the hospital 80, 100 days a year? Uh, it's, it's something to really worry about. Uh, I wouldn't call it an epidemic, but we really need to start taking care of ourselves because, uh, you know, if we can't take care of ourselves, how are we going to take care of others? Um, you know, I, I sat with a lot of uh, 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 experts in obesity over the last couple of months, and. It, it, it is a problem. Uh, it's not only a problem in the United Arab Emirates, it's a problem in our region. Uh, but um, one positive thing I can take out of it is that there's a lot of people that are moving more nowadays. Uh, there's a lot of greater options, uh, uh, health options uh, that you can choose from. Uh, and it's all about teaching them at a young age. That's, I think that's the most important part is once you teach them at a young age, uh, uh, my daughter, for example, eats, I eat two and a half kilograms of fruit a day because I do but she loves fruits. So teaching them young is very important. And also spreading awareness uh, for a cause like this is very important. It's a big problem, and it's a problem that we have to think about solving in the near future. Um, my name is Maryam Alali. I'm a student here at NYU Abu Dhabi. Um, I'll be a bit greedy. I'll have two questions for you. My first question is, I would like to know how you overcame your fears and possibly self-destructive thoughts before attempting the run. And um, my second point that I would like to address is um, your idea and your notion of self-suffering. I must say that that was um, particularly striking for me because speaking from personal experience, that, is, that very notion is the reason I run, is the reason I pursue martial arts, is the reason I attempted um, joining the UAE's national service. And I would love to hear you maybe perhaps elaborate on that point a bit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry, uh, can you remind me of the first question? Because I was so involved in your self-suffering and your, <laughs> and your, and your accolades. <laughs> I forgot course. about the first question. Sure. My first one was, I would love to know how you overcame the fears and possibly like thoughts that you had in the beginning, like not being strong enough, not being fit enough in the beginning. Uh, well... Uh, the idea was, was, was uh, you know, when I told my family who are here about the idea of this, of this run, no, no one believed me. And, you know, uh, I was the type of person before when I used to say I was going to do something, I never did it. All right. So this was one of those ideas that, uh, you know, people kind of brushed me off and said, all right, you're running from Fajr to Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Okay. We'll speak to you later. And, um, but I really wanted to do it. 
Uh, and I, I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. Uh, I mean, I'm going to be honest. We live in a very comfortable society, you know, where you, know, you can sit in your house and everything can come to you. You don't have to go out and do anything actually anymore. And uh, that's also another problem with uh, the rising uh, numbers of obesity. But I wanted to face my fears. I wanted to face some struggles. I wanted to face some barriers. And I knew, and I had an idea, that ultra marathon running and running a distance of 300 kilometers would, would tick all the boxes. Uh, you know, uh, and in terms of self-suffering, when I say that word sometimes, people question me, like, why are you trying to suffer, you know? The word self, you, why are you trying, but thank, thank you for, you know, explaining it in, in, in other ways. It's really important, you know, it's, it's, you're choosing to do it, first of all, no one's forcing you to do it. You're choosing to experience agony and struggle and the fact that you're going to fail a thousand times to succeed once, it's a process. You know, it's, it's all part of preparation. Uh, you, like I said uh, in the documentary, I feel like sometimes nowadays a lot of people get demotivated when no one's telling them they're, they're doing a good job. Uh, and people honestly nowadays only look at the final result, the end result. No one cares about what you're doing behind closed doors. No one cares about the amount of time you're training or preparing for an exam or for a, for, a, for a match, or for whatever you're doing. People want to look at your end result. And if you want to succeed in life, in my opinion, then you should cherish the preparation. Because the end result, in my opinion, is the celebration of the preparation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Basim Darwish. I work for Salat. Uh, in fact, what we have seen today is very much inspiring. Yeah, I, I want to thank you, I want to congratulate you for that, but just as one comment that uh, for many people maybe in this room who are sharing uh, the running as, as, as a lifestyle or as an experience, it's very obvious the benefits of running on mental, on social, on life, and uh, looking at those runners who put the time and sacrifice the resources early in the morning before they are in the office, they see the benefits. The question I know that you are Ambassador, with this mission, you are an ambassador for running for cause, where we really we translate running into, uh, you know, benefit to the community, to society, to give back. The question is, how can we, in the UAE society, institutionalize the running by making it, bringing it to the mass market? We don't see the schools. We don't see the the the. Uh, you know, there are bits and pieces of initiatives, but it doesn't add up to the story on when it comes to uh, making sure that it is there. And linking on this yesterday, I was very glad to see Abu Dhabi government announcing the acceleration program for the economy. And, and one of the pillars, the fourth pillar of this announcement was the society bringing more the community to participate into health and sport and activities, which is, which is highly appreciated from our leadership. That's the first question. The second, the last comment is, you know, you taking the ultra endurance running to the to the highest, it's becoming mega, super, ultra with this 2000 run. Just if you share with us more about your preparation for it from training and as well as logistics. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for, uh, to answer your first question, I'm a true believer that you can't force someone to do something. You can, you can put everything on the table, but it has to start from within. Uh, someone has to be fulfilled and have a, understand why he's doing something. Uh, you know, you can put a hundred initiatives in front of individuals, but th they're not going to do it if they don't want to. And uh, l let me tell you something about ultra running. You're gonna, you, you need to want it so bad because uh, it's a long distance. And um, in terms of, uh, you know, ex expanding running uh, uh, in the UAE, uh, running in the Arab world is not, uh, it's, not a, it's not a sport people uh, are, I'm going to be honest and say, comfortable doing, you know. A lot of people complain about their knees and their feet. And, you know, it's, uh, it's boring, you know, there's so many million things they can go through. So it hasn't been instilled uh, uh, here yet. There's other great sports we're good at, jujitsu, you know, uh, we're, we're good at we're, we're a lot of other greats. But in terms of running, I truly believe that all Emiratis, all of us, every single one of us are built for endurance. You look at our past and our history, you know. Um, I, I, I'm genetically, I have a runner's leg I never knew about, you know, uh, th that's what keeps me going. Uh, I'd like to thank my father for that as well. Uh, but uh, I just figured that out 35 years later. So um, 
we are built for endurance. You know, the, we, you know, we didn't come from, we came from, you know, really rough times. We had to move around a lot more. So we are endurance athletes in disguise. Uh, quote me on that, please. Uh, and in terms of uh, my preparation for uh, my next journey to, and I call it a journey, I don't call it a run. So if next someone wants to call it a run, I say running is five kilometers, 10 kilometers. But if it's a 2,000 kilometers, I call it a journey. Uh, the idea is very important. When I was running uh, from Fujairah to Abu Dhabi, we were just hanging out in the roads uh, in the middle of the night, uh, just so safe. There's, there's nothing harmless that, that, that can come near us. And it brought to my attention, it's not by coincidence that we are one of the safest countries in the world. Uh, you, know, you know, you have uh, individuals my age that sacrifice their lives in order to make this country a safe place. And just clicked that I, I'm going to, I'm, that I was going to, I'm going to now run for martyrs uh, from the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia that lost their lives uh, in, uh, to make our, our, our country a safe place. And so in terms of training, uh, I'm today, uh, I've, today's my 198th consecutive day running. Uh, I'm trying to get to 200 and stop. In those 197 days, I've run around 4,300 kilometers. Uh, on top of that, I keep my, uh, physically, I, I keep myself in great shape. I do five days of uh, weight training and functional training uh, to a total of around 28, 29 hours of total training per week. Uh, I'm also, like I was telling uh, uh, the uh, first person who asked the question, uh, I'm, I'm tweaking my food. Uh, nutrition is 80% of everything we do. Uh, I realize more and more that uh, I perform better when I'm vegan. My wife's not going to be happy about that right, right now because it's a struggle. Uh, it's a lot of volume food. I eat around 6,000 calories a day. I burn around 5,500 calories a day. Um, so I, I'm, food is very important. Uh, I really take care of myself in terms of food. I think my colleagues will, will understand, and, and, and they're smiling right now. They know um, I'm a fruitarian from 9 a.m. to 5 a.m., which means I only, from 5 p.m., which means I only eat fruits between those times. And uh, this is all through self-experimentation, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't go to anyone. I, I learned this, these things by myself. And uh, there's no better feeling in the world is when you discover something yourself. And so training's going really well. If you did really ask me if I was ready tomorrow, I'd tell you yes. But I think it's all about now uh, putting the, mi the mileage in, uh, running with good form. And uh, it's not a physical preparation now. It's all a mental preparation. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. First of all, congratulations on Thank this you. big achievement. Uh, my name is Mohammed Dusama. I work in Outlook Offshore. And I would like to have you give me or give us a very specific advice for someone who literally started running last week. So that would be great. Thanks. Uh, after your third or fourth day of running in a row, when you feel like crying, cry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you know, you're, you're going to feel a lot of, uh, a lot of different pains. Uh, sometimes, uh, if you're going to be a consistent runner, there are days, there are bad days. So there are days when you actually do get up and you say, why am I doing this? Uh, but uh, like I was saying before, you have to know why you're doing something. I truly believe that you can't give yourself a 100% uh, chance to succeed in something if you don't know why you're doing it. Thank you. خالد الشحي مركز الامارات للدراسات والبحوث الاستراتيجيه اشكرك اول شيء الدكتور خالد عندي سؤال كم English, كان please. وزنك قبل الرياضه وكم بعد ما بعد التمرين so he asked me uh, what my weight was before uh, my, my, my journey so i was 127 kilograms and I, i don't regret it by the way i eat a lot of great food uh, trust me i ate enough food to last me a lifetime uh, but uh, it was unhealthy Uh, I, I, you know, there's a lot of you know, medical issues that we're going to lead on in the future. So uh, I, today, as we speak, I'm 75 kilograms. That's going to be my run weight uh, heading to Mecca, uh, inshallah. And, and another great point about it is, uh, like I was saying, nutrition is very important. When I started my run from Fujairah to Abu Dhabi, I started at 75 kilograms. When I ended my run, I only lost 0.5 kilograms, uh, mainly because um, I hydrated really well. Uh, I do drink around 18 to 20 liters of water a day. Uh, I, you know, 
some people say two liters is enough, but trust me, I need the, the water in my system, especially training in this weather uh, with the humidity. I lose around three kilograms of water weight in some of my long runs, uh, but uh, I'm used to it. So thank you. Uh, Dr. Khaled, hi, this is Mohammed speaking. I work in Mubadala. Oh. I start losing. Sorry, uh, we're going back to Khalid. Huh? My run. Ah, 127 kilograms. 75. So I lost you, Khalid. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dr. Khalid. It's Mohammed speaking. I work for Mubadala. Uh, Dr. Khaled, I just wanted to ask you about uh, the training. You said a lot of training goes on behind closed doors. There's no glory. You know, you're all constantly training. So my question here is a bit more about momentum. How do you keep momentum when you're training? Because, of course, we're not machines. We're human beings. So we get sick. We get injured. Um, we travel. So that momentum sometimes dies down. And uh, my question to you is how do you keep yourself going after you get knocked down? After, after you know the Thank you. Um, don't laugh when I tell you this. I eat 16 cloves of raw garlic a day, uh, which is anti-inflammatories. I eat a lot of ginger. I eat a lot of foods that are anti that, that, that heal my body, basically. Uh, but also in training for Abu Dhabi, Mecca, I'm training to be 40%, 30%. I'm not 100%. I haven't been 100% for over 200 days. Uh, but I'm trying to simulate how I'm going to feel like day 20, day 25. And the only way to do it is to... Basically, try to attack your central nervous system every day. I would not recommend this to anybody, by the way. Uh, you know, and I'm, I, but I, I've been doing that. And I try to make sure that I, I'm ready for the next day as well. Uh, I'll give you an example. Today, I ran 25 kilometers. I ran it in a five-minute 40 pace. I did the same thing on Friday. I ran it at a seven-minute pace. And I stopped 100 times. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a matter of uh, understanding what your end goal is. My end goal is a 38-day journey that's going to take me 2,070 kilometers uh, away from my house. So uh, I have to be mentally prepared to understand that after day three, day four, it's all downhill in terms of my capabilities. I just have to work with what I have. And I'm trying to assimilate that in my training right now. Thank you. A normal question about how did you decide you want to do this next race? Because logically, you know, you do a 5K race, your next goal is a 10K race. You do a 327-kilometer run, your next race is 700-kilometer run. How did you decide to just do a, do a run that's tenfold what you just, what you just uh, experienced or did? Honestly, uh, with, the, with, with the amount of preparation I have been doing, uh, with uh, this incredible year that's passed and having a successful journey from Fujairah to Abu Dhabi. Um, setting a target of 53 kilometers a day for 38 days uh, is doable for uh, someone with the training uh, I put in. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's not about the physical aspect uh, any, anymore. Uh, you know, um, it's all about the mental aspect. Um, um, I'm, I'm prepared and ready to run 53 kilometers a day. And it's, it's, it's all about self-confidence. We have to have some self-confidence inside of us. Uh, and it comes through uh, many forms, but it, the most important thing is to get out of your comfort zone, which I do every day, and, and feel it and fe feel it out. Understand your capabilities because you won't understand it in your comfort zone. Uh, thank you. Hi, Khaled, Dr. Khaled. Such a pleasure to meet you. My name is Lara. Um, such an inspiring story on so many levels. One, um, you stand for something. You, you had um, a vision. You achieved it. It takes massive mental um, uh, strength and ability to get there. Secondly, um, you had the ability to also kind of shine the light and raise awareness around not only kind of how we can support the Rahma Foundation and the cancer research, but also around changing stereotypes around this is my life. I'm meant to be obese. I'm meant to be 127 kilos. You can change that. It's something that's in your control. Um, but thirdly, you touched on something a couple of times, which I found extremely interesting. And I would love to know a little bit more about it and how we can actually share that with the larger UAE, which is about moving into a plant-based diet. Um, science purely shows, and I fi find it ironic saying it within a research institute, but r science purely shows that it can, it can totally negate diabetes. 
um, and with the region having such a large and alarming rate of increasing diabetes, it would be so beautiful to continue to share your story about how a plant-based diet, your wife is looking at me like, don't go vegan, <laughs> but how a plant-based diet can actually do, can strengthen and, and, and fuel somebody's body to do such extreme sports. But still, I can even see in the videos, the, color, the, the light in your eyes, you're shining. So I'd love to hear more and maybe share with the audience about how important nutrition can be in, in doing that and how maybe we can try to educate more and more schools around how important it could be to turn plant-based within, within that environment. You know, great question. Uh, well, honest truth, I, I perform my best when I'm a vegan. The only reason I'm vegetarian and pescatarian is because I have to go out of my house sometimes and eat food in restaurants and I have to eat fish. Uh, but if, with all honesty, uh, I'm preparing myself mentally to become a vegan. Um, the, uh, the only thing that uh, is tricky is there's not many Emiratis that are vegan, first of all, all right? <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, my, my father is a vegetarian, by the way. Uh, there's not many vegetarian vegans, you know. We, we do like, uh, in this community, we do like our meat and our chicken. Uh, but um, the whole reasoning behind me going towards plant-based is it turns out it, it, it's, he, it, it, it's an anti-inflammatory, first of all. It's medicinal. Uh, I don't take any painkillers. Uh, I eat around uh, you know, 12 different kinds of vegetables a day. Um, it, it's, it tastes good. Uh, it looks good. Uh, and, and you get full from it as well. Uh, uh, but it's really, really hard for one individual. I, I'll try my best, and I do it as much as I can. But it's really, really hard to convince someone to go towards a plant-based diet uh, because it confuses them. How do I get my protein from? Where am I getting? I get more protein when I'm vegan than I do when I'm a vegetarian. Uh, you know, I get, um, there's so many different things I can, you know, consume when I'm a, a vegan. Uh, uh, and uh, in volume as well. So you can eat more and feel full uh, and, uh, and feel good about yourself. Uh, you know, so, you know, I really highly, uh, I promote uh, plant-based foods. Uh, I'm, I'm, an, you know, I'm an athlete right now, I consider myself an athlete, and I've been running for 193 consecutive days. I don't have any niggles, uh, knock on wood. Uh, there's no inflammation in my body. Um, I sleep well, uh, you know, I, am, I don't look like an individual who's run over 6,500 kilometers in 10 months. Uh, so I really support plant-based foods. Uh, hi, Khaled. My name is Hani. I work for Mubadala. I'm a long distance runner myself, but not that long of a distance. Um, I know that after 30 kilometers, uh, it becomes a battle between the runner and his, I mean, the mind, the mind and the body. The mind is telling you to stop, to quit, and then you're telling the, the body is telling the mind to shut up. Um, so my question for you is, what were you thinking about during your runs? Because I know that's a big challenge. That's number one. Number two, what were you listening to? Thank you. Um, you know, one, one of the things that I, uh, I faced, uh, for me especially, it was when I got to the 170 kilometer mark. Uh, it's really, really important to put your emotions aside when you're running long distances. It's extremely important. And, um, you know, I have... I have twins, uh, they were born a year ago, and uh, my daughter doesn't know because she doesn't know we have a song. We have a song, me and my daughter, she's one years old, but we do have a song. And uh, I was happening to listen to music 170 kilometers in, uh, and uh, you know, I shuffled my music and there goes the song, you know, it's me and my daughter's song. And it really uh, played, uh, played with my mind, to be honest. Uh, you know, I had to stop for a second, gather my thoughts. I couldn't believe the song came on in this moment, you know. Uh, and I think it's very important when you meet your barriers in long distance running that you put all emotions aside uh, because your main focus is take that next step forward. Uh, and um, uh, that's, what, that's what I had to deal with. I had to deal with putting my emotions aside. Uh, was, what was the second question, if you don't mind me asking? Yes, uh, I've gone through over, I would say, uh, during the Rahma run, I was listening to music but uh, majority of the time, I wasn't listening to anything. I was listening to my, but uh, nowadays, I, I discovered audiobooks. Uh, and I've gone through, I'm not even joking, huh? I've gone through in the last maybe 200 plus audiobooks in the last five months. Uh, incredible stuff, trust me. You know, <laughs> sometimes I could be running uh, a 40, 50 kilometer run and 30 kilometers in, I realize that I'm, I hit the 30 kilometer mark. So. 
uh, it's something to take your mind off, you know, things. I, I've learned a lot of stuff on, for example, one of my favorite topics lately is emotional intelligence. So I listen to a lot of books on that. Uh, but uh, you have to vary. You can't listen to music for, three, for 80 hours. Uh, so you know, audio books would help as well. Hi, uh, good evening, Dr. Khaled. Uh, my name is Muna Haji. I'm from Public Health Research Center. And my director, Dr. Abdul Shakur, asked you a while ago about uh, how uh, to decrease the obesity and uh, the causing factor of that. I just want to ask you how we can engage Emirati youth to participate in research that uh, that make their um, them to be healthier more, because we are doing a national study for 20,000 Emirati, and so far we've just collected 6,000. Uh, 6, uh, and we need more and more, uh, because we are looking for the cardiovascular uh, disease, uh, diabetes, obesity, and so on. So um, or what's your advice uh, toward Emirati National uh, Youth in and we are facing a lot of resistance يعني, in, uh, and they come and they participate. So I would like to hear your advice regarding that. Uh, you know, off the top of my head, it's a big topic, but maybe conducting a, a conference uh, that targets childhood obesity, uh, not only in the United Arab Emirates, but in the Arab world. Uh, it's a big problem. And second, most important thing is we shouldn't reward someone for trying to tackle obesity. You know, uh, there should be no reward, in my opinion. Uh, if it's, uh, we should help, of course, but uh, the, we should not reward someone for attack because what they're doing is they're helping uh, themselves. Uh, and uh, like I was telling you guys, it's, the, it's a process, it's a journey. And uh, we should leave it to them to experience that uh, without giving rewards. Thank you. One last question. Unfortunately, we have to end the public Q&A session, but Dr. Khaled is here. You can approach the stage afterwards and you can ask him um, your questions. So one last question from the gentleman. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Arafat Khatib, uh, working for a consultancy firm. Um, my question is, you know, spiritual leaders usually go through the self-suffering. Self what Was there any improvement in your... Uh, or some gains on your spiritual life. But what's the impact on uh, the spiritual life that uh, you've experienced through uh, this whole journey? Did it really change anything in that domain? Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. Very interesting question. I'm running uh, to Mecca, uh, if that answers your question. <laughs> uh, first of all. And second of all, uh, it actually it, it has helped. It, uh, like I was pointing out before, uh, it's it's ticked all the boxes that maybe I had problems uh, facing before. You know, many many will tell you that are close to me that you know I'm still the same stubborn, you know, hard-headed person, but uh, in a different way. You know, in a very different way. Yeah, you have to be. Uh, uh, I'm more controlled. Put it that way. More controlled uh, in my thoughts and what I'm going to say. And like I was saying before, uh, getting out of your comfort zone, experiencing you know, self-suffering or whatever we, we want to call it, it actually translates into a lot of things in your personal life, in your work, working environment, and a lot of, uh, a lot of things in life. So I, heard the, I highly urge a lot of people to get out of your comfort zone and, you know, experience something that you find difficult. Like for, for, for me, for example, I found running difficult. And you fast forward 10 months later and, you know, I'm about to embark on a second running journey. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank our amazing audience for tonight for your uh, very, very um, inspiring interaction with Dr. Khaled. Kindly join me in thanking Dr. Khaled for being here tonight. Thank you very much.